Hi, and welcome to Whip It Out. Let's whip it out. It's Tuesday, and uh, we got several guests lined up today. How are you guys doing? Good, doing good. How, are you? how about you? Man? Doing great. It's a great sunny day. I'm loving it. It is. Oh, it's, it's a wonderful. wonderful day. So, Jason, what did you do this weekend? What did I do this weekend? Well, I went four wheeling with my friends. We uh, found a few trails, had a few road pops. Um, a few pops. road pops. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, just had a good time. Now, wait, is that a few by your standard or by my standard? Well, I don't, hmm, that's a good question. I'll say my standard because okay. I, I didn't die. <laughs> <laughs> that always works. That always Last works. time I used your standard, I uh, hit a tree and broke my arm. So. <laughs> <laughs> At least it was only an arm, though. At least it right. was only, yeah, really. <laughs> it it was only an arm. That's all right. <laughs> so, Jake, how'd your weekend go? It went well. Uh, I had a few friends over. Everybody's back from college now for the summer vacation. We had a little get together, watched a few movies, and we had a great time. And, Kept a little bit safer than you guys did, apparently. Nice. <laughs> uh, I, had, I had a ridiculously safe weekend. All I did was go to the theater and watch Iron Man 3. How, How was that? that? It was pretty dang good. I couldn't believe it. I, I'm not a huge fan of the Iron Man series, but I love this one. Yeah. I really did. Good. See, I really never got like into any of those movies for some reason. Mm. <laughs> What'd you do? I don't know why. Absolutely nothing. I worked. Wait, I closed, Frisco did nothing? I did nothing. I closed Friday and I closed Saturday. And I worked Sunday, so I really had no time to do anything. Wow. Well, it's a good thing you're here today, then. I think the only free time I had is got a little basketball, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> so tell us, Frisco, what work. are you doing on the show today? Today on the show, I am interviewing Rick Schott. He is a DJ. And also, I found out he's uh, into some more stuff that we will be getting into later. Oh, wow. Ooh, legal stuff? Or? Legal. Legal stuff. It's legal awesome. Stuff. Good to know. It's now, like, who do you got on today? I'm interviewing an owner of a DJ company, so I feel like we should almost do our interview together. <laughs> no, our producer's is frowning team. at that. So. Sorry, we can do a 22 minute tag team. Bye. Tag team. <laughs> tag team on Whip It Out. <laughs> well, we could make it a menage a trois because I also have a DJ on air from WOBL today. Ooh, and I'm great. actually interviewing Tony Fotai, lead in the upcoming uh, Dirty, or not Dirty Rod Scoundrels, uh, Little Shop of Horrors. Oh, wait, wait, nice. wait, is that the one with the, the plant that eats people? Yes. Oh, I can't wait for that. Yes, I'm very excited to see what he has to say about the upcoming <laughs> uh, show. Was it like a human flytrap? Uh, kind of, except it's like really big and it'll kill everybody. That <laughs> <laughs> sounds pretty dope. Sounds pretty dope. Yeah. Well, yours isn't a DJ, so you're not included in the. Uh, oh, you're, you're an outcast. Yeah, Whatever. Yeah, what? Who stand are in the you? Corner and watch. <laughs> what's, your, <laughs> what's your name even? You know my name. <laughs> I know you. Jake. I know you, Jake. Frisco, how do you not know Jake? We do this every week. I know Jake. I'm just playing with. I'm them. the one dude that thinks he can pull a bow tie. Right. I know bow tie's looking nice too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, well, uh, when we come back, I will have Dave Andrews from WOBL, WDLW. Make sure you don't miss a minute of Whip It Out. We'll be right back. Boys, are you tired of a rejection because you don't look manly enough? Then I have some good news for you. Introducing BAM! With special ingredients such as chia seed extract, high fructose corn syrup, swag extract, and shea butter. Just apply the area of choice and BAM! Go from boyhood to manhood in just 10 seconds flat. Now you can go out in public with confidence. BAM! Be a real man. Warning, may cause drowsiness, skin irritation, rash in unwanted areas, unwanted attention, eye twitches, marriage proposals, and severe manliness. So please use with caution. Welcome to Capital Theater, a fantastic renovation for a neighborhood gym. Capital is a place where you can come and experience the old-fashioned decor and get to see new release movies. At Capital, you can get great weekday deals like on Mondays, tickets are $5, Tuesdays, free popcorn, and Wednesdays, happy hour. The concession stand provides a nice variety of food and beverage for you to enjoy the show. Capital has a fantastic stadium seating so you and friends can relax and enjoy the big screen. Capital is located at West 65th Street, Cleveland, Ohio, and Capital Theater. Rough day working out? Get all sweaty, grimy, and gross? Anti-monkey butt absorbs sweat and removes that irritating itch caused by friction and clothing against the skin. Don't be bothered by sweat anymore. Go pick up anti-monkey butt in your local store. Anti-monkey butt is ideal for butt-busting activities such as motorcycling. After a nice ride out, your buns might get a little sore. Sprinkle anti-monkey butt on your gear before you go. Maybe your feet start to get to you. Give anti-monkey butt a try. 
It's best to areas prone to tenderness. Indoors or outdoors, work or play, or on occasion when you sit on your butt all day. Don't let your buns get red. Use anti-monkey butt instead. Hi, and welcome back to Whip It Out. Let's whip it out and whip it good. I'm here with Dave Andrews, a DJ from WOBL, WDLW, who is on air live daily. Dave, how you doing? Good. How about yourself? Pretty good, buddy. It's, it's, it's a little like, it's almost a buck wild type feeling being in front of TV cameras. I'm used to being hid behind a microphone, honestly. So uh, you're a former student of W, uh, or not WOBL, but uh, OCB. Yes. But we'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, tell me a little bit about yourself, about your, uh, your history. How, what got you to where you are? I barely graduated high school. I did, uh, I played in some, I don't want to say like, nah, we weren't probably that great, but I played in some bands in high school and I didn't do so great at it, but I always knew I kind of wanted to stay connected with music almost. So it was either that or be a police officer. And that was just from, you know, growing up and watching cops. And like, you know, like, why are you sweating? Stop being a cop yeah, be cool. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm watching cops. That's yeah. why I'm sweating. <laughs> but, um... Cops doesn't start till four. <laughs> yeah, you're lying. You touched my drum set. But honestly, I think wanting to be still involved in music somehow yeah. and still be kind of lazy radio like the best of both worlds yeah so you mentioned being in a band uh did you uh play any significant shows or uh i opened for mc chris he's designed some cartoons for adult swim nice we've played in front of the old odeon we made it to the high school rock off one year but local clubs you know pennsylvania some pla some places on the east coast but you know it was weekend trips yeah. parents van it's not like Fun nonetheless. Uh, though, oh, huh? yeah, it was great. So uh, how soon after high school did you realize you were going to get into broadcasting? And, you know, was it right after high school that you started or, you know, take some time? I toured the school sometime my senior year. And I was like, okay, yeah, this is definitely the route I want to go. So obviously I still had to put that effort in to graduate my senior year. But from the day I got my diploma, it was literally a month and a day until I started here at, oh, wow. at school. Nice and quick. Yeah, it didn't give me enough time to get in trouble. You yeah, know, that senior year after, that probably, summer after senior year, I probably could have gotten a little bit of trouble. I probably should have done that. There was, there was a good, like, six months before I did anything after uh, high yeah. school. I mean, that month was terrible, though. <laughs> it was bad. That month almost landed you in jail. Probably. So you, were, uh, you went to OCB, but mm -hmm. you didn't go to this campus. You went to the former campus. Is no, right? probably, like, what? I don't know how big, how big is that hill in Valley View, because honestly, I feel like it's, yeah. it's a good trek. I was down at the bottom of the hill by, like, the canal or whatever the, river the there. The air's a little thinner up here. Yeah, you know. <laughs> so uh, how would you compare the facilities? I don't, know, I don't know if you got a chance to look around here, but... Oh, this is, compare? like, light years beyond. Yeah? Yeah, completely. I mean, yes. you know, the old school is nice. Fun. This is like really nice. Yeah. So uh, you went to OCB, and uh, how did that get you to where you are now at WOBL, WDLW? Interning and uh, saying yes a whole lot. I, yeah. I very rarely said no. So you got the job right after your internship or during your internship? or? No, I finished up my internship because I graduated school, and I immediately, um, I don't know, started applying for jobs and doing that thing, but I was still staying involved with people from OBL, and the minute they had a Saturday position opened, and this is like a whole separate funny story, I'm not gonna get into the whole thing, but uh, the old- You can if you want to. No, no, definitely not. The old program <laughs> director called me and asked me if I wanted a Saturday show. I was hanging out with one of my buddies, and I'm okay. like, you know, yeah, totally, you signed me up. <laughs> that's, that's where it started. Okay. So you started doing Saturday mornings, uh, it was 6 a.m. or? No, I started, I didn't have to be up that early on Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Nice. Kind of the, the, still the same slot so I am. you do in, on the Cool Cat. Uh, yeah, now. on Saturdays. Cause so uh, WOBL is, uh, and that's what you do during the week. Yeah, that's a uh, classic country. WDLW is uh, Rock and Roll cool Oldies. Cat Oldies. So yes. uh, which do you prefer out of the two? I was raised with a lot more of, you know, WDLW's. 60s, 70s era type stuff, a lot mm -hmm. of album rock. But the country stuff's, you know, it's pretty cool. Being a musician, like the musicianship of like bluegrass yeah. players, light years way beyond wherever I was at right. when I was playing. So you do uh, w, uh, OBL, which is the gold country station, yeah. seven days a week. So let's talk a little bit more about that. Who's your target demographic when you're on WOBL? Both male and female, 35 to 55. I actually had to ask my boss that earlier. I knew it was <laughs> skewed up the age a little bit, but I didn't. I, I could have thought it was like 45 to 100 or something. Right. I don't know. <laughs> well, yeah, it is surprising on those two stations. You always think like, man, I got some people that can barely get out of their wheelchair listening to me right now. And yeah. then you get some younger people calling up that's 
pretty interesting. Yeah, they're because they're usually the ones that start drinking at noon. <laughs> <laughs> or they call me at six fifteen in the morning and they're still drinking from the night before. Right, that's always something that could happen. Uh, too. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I've experienced that one or, once or twice. Yeah. Um, can well, you I'll be doing that when you fill in for me coming up then. Yes. Calling you at like six in the morning. <laughs> the boat. What are you doing? Well, maybe you can give me some tips because my next question was going to be explain a normal day at WOBL. Honestly, um, like. Probably me sitting at home eating. Did you have those new birthday cake Oreos, by the way? No, I That's, didn't know those existed. Oh, they're phenomenal. They have <laughs> the ones with the golden cookies and the ones with the regular chocolate cookies. But what I was trying to get at was it's probably more interesting, like, watching me at home watch TV. Because the fun stuff's what you hear on the radio. All the behind-the-scenes stuff is, like, you're not paying attention to the commercials that are playing or doing things like that. Yeah. So like the fun stuff's actually what happens on the air. I mean, we like to joke off the air, but yeah, you know, typical day, just I'd say like any other office, but maybe a little more casual and laid back. Yeah. So um, talking about being on the air and the fun stuff you do on there, I know you have kind of a, well, I know it's at least a weekly, you might do it more often, but every now and again, you uh, you talk movies. Mm -hmm. So uh, you do that with uh, the sportsman of the station, is that right? Yeah. Mike Strauss. Yeah. His cousin won a Tony award. I, I saw that on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty interesting. So I don't know what he he said he couldn't even pronounce the play. I asked him on the air. I go, Do your parents ever used to yell at you and why why don't you be more like your cousin? <laughs> I guess she's like four years younger than him and Do your she, parents yell at you and ask you why you weren't more like your sister? <laughs> no. <laughs> actually not. Do they yell at her and ask her if she's why can't why can't she be more like you? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> So, uh, I am of not movies, by any means the good kid, though. <laughs> speaking of movies, what's out and what's good? I liked recently what I saw, or I'll tell you one I really didn't like because I just saw it this weekend, the Tom Hanks movie Cloud Atlas, or Atlas Cloud, or whatever it's called. Same guys that did The Matrix. I don't know if anyone else in the Atlas room. Atlas Cloud. It's like three hours long, and it's 95% as confusing as um, hmm. Inception. I hate it. I absolutely hated it. <laughs> But I really liked End of Watch. That's out on DVD now, and that's got uh, Jake Gyllenhaal in it. It's also on Netflix. Center. Is it on Netflix yeah, now? I'm going home and watching it. So, um, what do you find most challenging about your uh, daily on-air shift? Most challenging about daily on-air shift? Waking up at 4.45. That's, oh, okay. After I get that accomplished, it's, you know, smooth sailing from there. So you don't get used to that? Um, I mean, you do in a sense, but it's still... It, it, not cool, yeah, I'll well, tell you that. It's the worst in the winter time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's too At least cold. it's daylight now before 6 a.m., which makes it a little bit nicer. Yeah, it is pretty interesting waking up that early and seeing the sun up. Um, what kind of feedback do you get from your listeners? It all depends. I mean, if somehow I end up there on a Saturday night, usually it's, you know, playing party music. They want me to, you know, or play, like, really sad bluegrass songs to those that are drunk and sad. But normally, like, typically Monday through Fridays in the mornings, you know, if I do trivia, I have good response for it. Always have requests rolling in. So it's overall positive. I mean, last year at the fair when I took over, there was, I listen to the station all the time, but I don't listen to Super Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I just sit in the back of the fair booth like, oh, hi. Yeah, hi, I'm, I'm Super Dave. <laughs> I don't like you. Like, okay, so you have that. Yeah. I'm sure there's probably a lot more people that don't like me than they at least keep their mouth shut. They seem to like Super Dave. Yeah, you never know. Um, what are some interesting uh, events, remote broadcasts, or say people you met, famous people, uh, while working at WOBL? I got to take my picture with Gordon Gee recently. Last really? Last week, actually, yeah. Nice. What, what event was that for? He was doing a tour of Ohio, and this was all scheduled before all the controversy with whatever he said about Catholics and everything like that. Mm -hmm. So he was doing, he hit 44 out of, I don't know if there's like 88 or 82 counties in okay. Ohio. But that was, his goal is to tour and hit 44 of them in his Lorraine County stop was Kudrowski's Bakery. Brought nice. like uh, some cheerleaders with him, a bunch of uh, OSU students and Brutus. I got my picture taken with Brutus too. Got your picture taken with Brutus, yeah. nice. Um, WOBL and WDLW are independently owned local stations. Yeah. Uh, name some pros and cons for working for an independently uh, small market radio station. Pros, if my boss, you know, the owner of the station doesn't like something, he tells me. Cons, same thing. You get that feedback from the people that are above you. You see the guy that signs your check every day. Right. 
what really helps out that we're independently owned, we're a local radio station, and the community focus is huge. That's like 110% of why we do what we do today. Yeah. Uh, where can we find more information about WOBL, WDLW? Like us on Facebook, Gold Country 1320. We need Facebook likes. Okay. Or WOBL, WDLW.com. That would work. Too. And the Cool Cat 1380. No, don't like them. They have don't too like many them? likes. They, oh. The Gold Country needs more likes. Wow. I like when people like the Cool Cat. Yeah. All right. Uh, I probably got time for one more question. And okay. uh, it's, I want you to take your time to think about this one. Okay. Um, of all artists, musicians, whether it's on your stations or not, who would you say is downright the worst performer currently performing? The worst performer currently performing. <clears throat> I was hoping you'd ask me for the best, I would say. Can I give you the best? Yeah, and then the worst. Quick shout outs. The worst, I, the worst is tough. I really can't give you an answer. All right, well I maybe saw, I'll have that answer I saw for Poison, you. they were pretty bad. I saw Poison, they were pretty you bad. You saw Poison is, yeah, Poison was bad. Ba back in like 03. All right, well, you've heard it from Dave. Uh, poison is the worst. When we come back on Whip It Out, Frisco's going to have Rick Shot, another DJ who works in a little bit of a different format. So stick around. We'll be back right here on Whip It Out. Are you tired of looking at your girlfriend looking a mess? Are her eating habits eating away at you instead of the food? Then try Poof She Gone. Poof She Gone is highly formulated to change the duck in a pond into a swan. Pour a pinch and make a wish. Magically transform your girlfriend from Halle Scary into Halle Berry in a matter of seconds. Rub your eyes, click your heels. It's all real, the woman of your dream. If you're blinded every time you see your girlfriend, then visit PoofSheGone.com or call 1-766-374-3466. You finally meet the guy of your dreams. You meet face to face and then you smile. Oh no. <laughs> you then use Quest 3D white strips. 3D white strips are equipped with the heavy duty enamel safe fluoride whitener. Just peel, apply, and reveal twice daily for 30 minutes to see visible results in 10 days, guaranteed. So for your next first night, make sure your smile is bright with Quest 3D white strips for a smile that will impact, not distract. Pick it up at a store near you, Walmart, Drug Marts, or any participating stores. There are spills and there are sticky situations. Situations no ordinary paper towel can handle. That's why Lysol has integrated a dual action wipe with two sides. One for daily touch-ups and one for tougher messes. And with the approach of the cold and flu season, Lysol kills 99% of viruses and bacteria. So whether you're just cleaning up the daily grime or tackling that sticky mess, you know you can count on Lysol brand wipes. For tips to keep your home safe and healthy, go to Lysol.com slash mission for health. YMCA's of America, where you can go to grow, offers everything from swimming, basketball, weightlifting, cardio exercise, and all varieties of workout classes. With so many campuses to choose from, you can find the one that is most convenient for you. YMCA's of America has everything for the whole family. There are many lessons for kids and adults. So go to the YMCA nearest you and register now. It's fun to stay. Hello everyone, welcome back to Whip It Out. I am here with Rick Schott. Rick, what's going on, my man? How you doing? Very good, how about you? Nice to see you today. Not too bad, thank you for having me, I appreciate it. Now Rick Schott, Schott's a common last name. I know a bunch of Schott's by chance. Do you know a Kenny, Cody, or maybe a Brittany? Oddly enough, no. Uh, my whole childhood I was growing up, everybody wanted to know if I knew Marge. Marge? <laughs> yeah, Cincinnati Reds owner. Definitely, I feel that. I get that all the time. Um, now, Rick, I heard you're a DJ. Um, at what age was it that you figured out that you wanted to get into DJing? Um, well, I was when I was in high school. Everybody wanted to uh, hear me on the radio and whatnot, so I started doing uh, PS or you know uh, uh, the announcements in my high school. And then after high school, I ended up getting into DJing with a friend of mine. Oh, really? Why, yeah. why was it that everyone wanted you to get in the radio? Everybody told me that uh, I had the voice for it. The voice for it? <laughs> I don't know whether it was a compliment at the time, but it turned out that I did. So uh, <laughs> it, it's, it worked out. And um, what, did you, what was your first job as a hired DJ? What, what did you do? What did you get into? A wedding, actually. Uh, it was my first, yeah, it was my first job as, as a, when I, you know, getting paid uh, to DJ. Uh, after that, uh, a friend of mine, uh, who was actually at the wedding, um, uh, actually heard me do the wedding and approached me to go ahead and, and uh, work with him uh, in his company, the DB Productions. DB Productions? Yep. Uh, so I ended up working with him uh, off and on for basically the last 20 years now. The last 20 years? Yeah. Oh, that's quite a while now. And uh, what, 
What kind of music do you DJ? Like, what kind? What do you prefer to do? Might I ask? What I would prefer to do would yeah. probably be the dance music, uh, like uh, anything that uh, you know keeps the energy going with the crowd. Uh, you know, country. I mean, I'm a fan of country, but uh, it's the line dancing and things like that. I'm not too much of a fan of. Mm. Uh, you know, give me the dance music, and I'll be more happy. Uh, you know, the, I love the energy of the dance. So definitely gets the people out of their seats. Also, yeah. um, Are there any other events that you have DJed for? Uh, well, I DJ karaoke, uh, dance clubs. Karaoke, uh, so you get to yeah. listen to everyone sing their heart get, out, huh? Yeah, I get to listen to everybody ruin the music that I love. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely that. Um, have you ever met any other like DJs by chance? Many along the way, yes. And do you think DJing helped improve your communication skills, or was it sort of like doing the announcements, that kind of thing, because everyone's listening to you and you're over a microphone, so. Yeah, it, it definitely uh, takes the, the fear away from public speaking. I, I can say that for one thing. Uh, you know, you start off when you're, when you're first starting the DJ and you're in front of crowds, mm -hmm. you know, your nerves kind of get to you, but eventually you just, uh, you ignore the fact that you're in front of 200 people or whatnot. Okay. Uh, did your family support you wanting to DJ? No, actually. Uh, I did it all on my own. By the time I was in high school, I really wasn't, uh, I really didn't have the family th issue behind me. So, uh, I, I, like I said, I did everything on my own. Uh, and that's uh, basically how it started. Uh, and I really didn't have that much support when it comes to family. Friends were the ones I leaned back on. I dig that. So, did you have to use your hard earned money on buying all the equipment? Because <laughs> I know that stuff gets pricey. Uh, it does, it does. And along the way, yes, you, you, you just buy your stuff well, you know, a little bit at a time as, thing goes on, as things go on. Uh, luckily, when I started out, uh, like I said, DB Productions, they basically had everything. So I just used most of their stuff. Right? Oh, that's awesome. Uh, so, but uh, the only thing that stinks about that is you basically have to uh, cut half your cost when you get hired because you know at, at outside events you have to take your costs, split it in half because you're taking somebody else's equipment. So you got to pay them for it. True. So, but like I said, uh, you know, it, it's a it's a thing that you have to deal with along the way is uh, is the pricing. Yeah, and um, what were some of your hobbies you had while you were growing up? Do you think that helped you become what you were today? Um, growing up, yeah, I was a stage actor. So, stage speak, actor. yeah, speaking in front of crowds uh, didn't really end up being a, an issue for me when I grew up because you, uh, as a stage actor, you're of course uh, dealing it in front of you know three to five hundred people on a night, um, and you're in front of studio lights such as these. Uh, so you just kind of ignore the fact that you're in crowd, you know, doing it in front of crowds. So you're sort of used to this kind of thing, huh? Yeah. And what do you mean by um, stage acting? What kind of what kind of acts would you do? Uh, well, uh, I started when I was six. I was in Peter Pan at Beck Center uh, in Lakewood. Um, after that, uh, it just started blossoming and I ended up doing comedy acts on stage. I did uh, musicals on stage mm -hmm. uh, and I did it all the way up until I was about 22, um, uh, which, you know, that encompassed, uh, of course, the Cleveland Opera by that point. Uh, but uh, yeah, you, you like I said, you do everything from comedy, uh, even murder mysteries I did, uh, you know, uh, uh, in front of, no, I wouldn't say crowds, those are more like uh, just people who attend. <laughs> uh -huh. And what pleased you most about um, being an actor? Murder mysteries was most enjoyable. Really? Yeah, definitely, because uh, we got to go to places like Coshocton, Ohio, uh, Inverness Country Club out by Toledo, uh, and uh, we were able to just, you know, uh, blow things up, which is kind of fun, you know, when you're doing that in public. Um, Murder Mysteries was, like I said, it was most fun because you, it's different. Every week uh, you get to play different characters uh, in front of live crowds. You're doing improv. Uh. So it's not scripted per se as much as a stage show is. So it kind of helps you be yourself a little bit more? De definitely. I feel yes. like that adds definitely more of like the feel to it too, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Definitely, yeah. Uh, you get to incorporate uh, a lot more of yourself into your characters. Uh, rather than you know, director would uh, on a stage show, yes. That's incredible. And also, um, you said you were into musicals? Yes. You got into musicals? Did you get into that um, through actual doing like, like theater stage acting? How uh, did that come about? Well, uh, when, I was, when I was younger and I was in, uh, started getting into acting, um, I started uh, getting into singing and I got into uh, a vocal coach who said that uh, you know, he wanted to instruct me because he had seen uh, uh, some talent and he wanted to kind of make that blossom. Uh, and he is the one that actually got me interested into uh, attempting to do musicals on stage because uh, 
uh, he said that I had the voice for it, so I decided to audition for a couple of different shows, and I ended up getting into a couple, so I ended up doing a lot more musicals than I did comedy or dramas. Now, is there, was it different coming from into like a comedy or a drama and going into a musical? Did it affect your nervousness maybe? Because it's a whole different thing, I see. It, I see that. it really is, yeah, because I mean, you, when you get into musicals, now you're, you're getting away from you know all just scripted shows and you're getting to singing and you're getting into dancing and choreography and all that uh, which I wasn't really that good at it took a lot more work and that did yes increase the nerves a hell of a lot <laughs> I bet and did you get it were you um, into singing anywhere else besides maybe doing whatever you did with the musicals uh, outside of outside of theater, no, not really. I mean, when I grew old enough, I you know I got into the, the karaoke bars, but that's uh, that growing up singing. Uh, I was in choirs in school, outside of shows on theater. That's about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, what kind of music is it that interests you the most? What kind of music interests me the most? Like what what do you like singing like the most? Um, well, uh, because of my background, I would have to say that uh, I'm better at country, not that I like it better than anything else. You have the voice for it? Yeah, well, I mean, it, it's a lot easier to sing. <laughs> uh, like, if you talk about uh, easier to sing, uh, uh, country would be, pop uh, would be what I would be interested most in, though, uh, as far as singing-wise goes. Okay, and um, was there any other, like, career choice besides, um, like, being in theater or DJing at you? Well, eventually, monetarily, yes. Uh, because, you know, you have to pay the bills. And by the time I was in my adult years, uh, the Cleveland Grand Opera doesn't really pay that much. Yeah. Uh, and DJing was kind of sparse and scarce at the time. So I ended up uh, going into business management, uh, which is, at the time, something I was doing uh, a lot as, along the way as a hobby, at, which ended up having to be a career. Oh, really? Yeah. So did you go to school for business management then? Somewhere? I was attempting to, attempting? but uh, yeah, when I was in high school, I was already working at a restaurant. When I graduated high school, uh, they offered me an assistant management job. So the college that I was going to kind of null and voided the fact that I needed a degree for it. Uh, so I ended up stopping the college and just took the management uh, the, with uh, the restaurant that I was at already. And that ended up being my career from that point on. I do that definitely. Like, I work. I've worked at a restaurant for five years. It's my only job I've ever had. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of that's kind of interesting to me. And what steps did it take for you to get into that position? Uh, well, I started in the restaurants when I was 16. So I started as a bus boy. Uh, when I was 18, I went into serving. Uh, a year later, they ended up making me the assistant manager. This was at a four-star restaurant in Lakewood. It used to be called the Dock. Uh, yep. What it was kind a, of restaurant is it? It was a four-star restaurant uh, over by uh, over at uh, Clifton and 117th. It's now, I believe, a, a Rite Aid pharmacy or something of that nature. Uh, but uh, that uh, basically took my assistant management, and I ended up uh, managing restaurants from that point on for about the next seven years. Um, uh, since then, I've managed several restaurants along the way up until about three or four years ago. And where have you managed at? Uh, most recently, Longhorn Steakhouse. Longhorn Steakhouse? Yep. Oh, that's uh, making me hungry. <laughs> and are there, what perks do you get by doing that? Because I know that seems like a very stressful job. Uh, perks, not many other than you get to have a lot of food at your disposal. <laughs> that's very uh, true. Perks, uh, you know, you, you uh, uh, stability is, go is a good one. You get great health benefits by being a manager. Uh, I would say, I have to say there's a lot more downsides to being a restaurant manager these days than, than there would be perks. Because uh, downsides, you're, you're, you give up your personal life, basically. Mm, that's true. And you're working always weekends. And how do you handle it when uh, you get stressed out? Like, what, do you, what steps do you take for that? Uh, when you get stressed out? Like, you, how do you handle that? You, you find, well, taking a step out of the restaurant, smoke breaks are always huge as a restaurant manager. Uh, they know if they see you step outside, it, it, you need that break. Um, you basically, uh, uh, you, have to, you have to understand that uh, being stressed as a, as a manager is uh, usually due to too much going on. Either it's your employment that's giving you the stress, your customers are being too uh, up in arms about certain details or whatnot. You basically have to understand that uh, you have to let everything roll off your shoulder. Ah, uh, definitely. Well, thank you so much, Rick Schott, for coming on the show today. Um, next, I have Alex with Jerry Sable. Pleasure, my friend. Thank you very much. Thank you.
For the finest cuts of deli and prime meats, come to Vienna Distributing. Vienna has been your corned beef distributor for over 50 years, serving the finest cuts of pastrami, turkey, steak, and much more. Don't forget to grab your cheese and fresh bread to complete your deli needs. Salads, desserts, deluxe party trays are also available. Come and visit Vienna Distributing at 8110 Carnegie Avenue or call 216-361-4500. Vienna also accepts credit and EBT cards. Come and get your hot corned beef at Vienna Distributing, 8110 Carnegie Avenue. Creative juices not flowing. Enter into my room. Too early to think. Dim the lights and hop right into bed with me. You need to get amplified on a tall can of amp energy. Equalize, energize, and get amped. Ladies, have you just gotten the surprise of your life? Having a baby is a beautiful thing, but you don't need the added stress of losing the baby weight. Now, there's the new no-show pill, the prenatal pill that helps you maintain your baby weight and gain only the necessary amount to keep the baby healthy. Take only one pill a day along with your other prenatal vitamins to help maintain your weight and have energy throughout your whole pregnancy. Log on now to noshowpill.com for confidential online purchase or consult with your doctor for your prescription. So go get your bottle of the new no-show pill now. Hey everyone, are you looking for something fun to do in a cool and comfortable environment? Then come hang out and chill at the Ice House, located at 10036 Brook Park Road in the beautiful city of Cleveland. The Ice House Tavern has multiple HD TVs so you and your friends can watch your favorite sporting events while enjoying a cold one and some hot and delicious food. And if you're tired of sitting inside, then go outside at the Ice House Tavern's comfortable patio, perfect for those hot summer days and nights. That's the Ice House Tavern, 10036 Brook Park Road, Cleveland, Ohio. And welcome back to Whip It Out. I'm here with Jerry Sable, owner of J Sable Entertainment. Jerry, how are you? Doing good. All right, good. so uh, you are obviously a DJ, right? Yes. That's what J Sable Entertainment is. Yes. But that's not all it is, is it? What no. kind of what what does J Sable Entertainment offer? What kind of uh, events? Uh, we do all kinds of different things. We have the regular DJing that's provided. Obviously, we have karaoke. We have name this tune. We have uh, a new thing we're working on with a company out of the UK called Speed Quizzing, where Ooh. your cell phone will actually be your uh, your controller for it. We do all types of different events from the, the kids' shows all the way up to senior citizens. Now, this company is right now, it's known for Name This Tune, right? What is Name This Tune for those of us who don't know? Name This Tune's a real fun game that we play. Basically, we play 30 second song clips. Mm -hmm. um, the people that are playing will give us, you know, title and artist, and then end of the game, they walk out of there with some sort of prize or something that makes them happy and makes them come back. That's pretty cool, actually. Um, and then you said there's a, something called speed quizzing. Now, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. That's why you're on this show today. What is speed quizzing? Speed quizzing, um, one of the things, that it's, it's, it's a type of trivia game. And typically what happens is that people always complain about the fact that people are cheating, using their cell phones, and, and, and doing stuff they shouldn't be doing, making the game unfair. Right. So what happens is instead of taking it and writing it down, we actually eliminate the opportunity for somebody to cheat and you use your smartphone as the controller. So the trivia host will ask a question and then the uh, people playing the game will have to input an answer and the fastest one will get the points. So it's, the, it's gonna be like a speed competition, right? Yeah. It's not just gonna be a quiz. Right. Man, that's gonna suck for people like me who, I'm not used to my smartphone yet. It, I take forever to type something in. Even if I know the answer, I'm probably not gonna beat anybody. But you know what? If, if it eliminates that cheating factor, I'm all for it. Don't feel bad, my smartphone's still smarter than I am. <laughs> uh, so, uh, tell me, how did you get, uh, where did Jay Sable Entertainment start? How did you get your start as a DJ? I personally started as a DJ when I was 17. Um, started with my high school dances because the DJ sucked. That's usually how most times it happens. <laughs> and then moving forward from there, even though I, I did several other jobs along the way, I still continue to DJ. Worked for several companies, watched them rise, watched them fall. And then about three years ago decided it's time to do it right and not have to work with other people who don't do things proper. Right. And started my company. So uh, when you started your company, what, what, what uh, kind of success did you imagine? Did you imagine your company growing? I did, I did. It's actually grown faster than I anticipated. I'm actually quite scared for next year. <laughs> so, but that's why we've pulled on so many people. But uh, with pulling on so many people, you must have a lot of venues you've been to, right? Yeah. What would you say is your most memorable venue? What is your favorite place to go to every week? 
My most memorable or my current favorite? Your current Two favorite. Two different things. Current favorite. Current favorite would be Colada. Legacy Village. I love that place. Always have been there for two and a half years. Make got some en- good friends out there. Make great friends out there. <laughs> got engaged out there, et cetera, et cetera. Really? You got engaged out there too? Yep. That's impressive. It was a staff party. <laughs> <laughs> she still figured it out. <sighs> Couldn't plan that better, could you? So, um, when you're going out to all these venues and you're going out to different places, you meet a lot of people. Who would you say is your favorite person you've ever met at a venue? Hmm. If not favorite, who who sticks in your mind? Yeah. Like, who do when you look ask, forward to see? When you ask something like that, the, the first thing that pops into my mind is there's that one chef, Chef Lagrassi or something like that. I don't remember his name. He was actually at a bar uh, that I was working on a Sunday night down there having a good time. But I don't even know who he is. Everybody <laughs> else knew who he was. I don't get starstruck. You don't get starstruck? No. Not at all? So, like, if Angelina Jolie walked by, you wouldn't be? No. Really? I wouldn't wow. care. So as a DJ, I have to ask you this question. I know it's subjective, but what's your favorite song to play? Right now? Yeah. I know it changes a lot, but right now, what is your get favorite song? Get Lucky by Daft Punk. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever get tired of that? No. Ever, ever? Are you going to get tired of that? Probably not. <laughs> I know I never get tired of that song. I have it on my iPod, and it goes on repeat probably for three or four hours. It's my ringtone on my cell phone. So uh, I have to ask you with that question is, what is your least favorite song that you know is going to get requested every week? What is your least favorite song you play? But musically, there really isn't one. Karaoke-wise, it's Picture by Kid Rock and <laughs> Cheryl Crow. It's a beautiful song, though. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not? Not at all? No. You don't like that one? Not after, not after eight beers and both sides and they start singing, no. <laughs> Speaking of karaoke events, uh, 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 most DJs sing at karaoke events as well. Do you sing at your karaoke events? When needed. I try to avoid it. I have like 137 songs that I know I can sing, and then once I do, people want me to sing again, and I, that's not the purpose of the show. So. so what song do you usually sing? Which of the 137 songs that you know do you usually pull out? in the mid- Like if you're at Colada and you're doing a karaoke event. Breakfast at Tiffany's. Sing? Breakfast at Tiffany's, Deep Blue something? Yep. Oh, I love that song so much. I'm glad I, I haven't heard anybody else say that in a long time. It's a song that nobody really knows, but I love it. So um, I myself am an amateur DJ, and I, I would love to know. I know that. You do? Mm-hmm. Of course, because I've worked for you. <laughs> I'm trying not to mention that on this show. It's okay. <laughs> but uh, what kind of advice would you give to an amateur DJ like me? Since I'm just starting out in the business, what are the things that I should know? Well, the first thing you should know is obviously to get set up with somebody who's already doing it. Right. Learn about it first, because just to come out of the woodwork and be a quote unquote DJ, there's a thousand of them out there in the Cleveland area right now and they're just destroying the market. Um, but just get out there, learn about it, and, and, and then look and focus at trying to make your own stuff happen. Right, so uh, I shouldn't just buy the equipment and walk out there and do it? No. Okay, no. so uh, speaking of buying the equipment, what kind of equipment should I buy? Because I- I'm just about to that point where I should probably buy some equipment to do my own shows. So what kind of equipment should I buy? Depends on what type of venue you're doing. If I'm going to a dive bar venue, let's say. Dive bar venue, you could get away with just about any. You could probably get away with a pile system, not that I would suggest it. I'm a big fan of JBLs. JBLs, JBLs? Crowns, and QSCs. Those are the type of ah, okay. uh, brand names, I think. So uh, you recently started your company three years ago, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, you told me the other uh, behind the scenes today that you had gotten a uh, bank account set up. What kind of bank account should I get? Like. I know you're not an expert on this, but I want to know because I've made my fair share of financial mistakes and investments that have failed. If you are going into this, you're going into it as an independent contractor, you want to get a business account of some sort. Right. And then you can just use your name as the, the, uh, the business name and then you go from there. Right. Is that something you found out from personal experience? Yeah. Or yeah, is it something, something somebody told you? No, I, I figured that out when I did all my research. So uh, what, what is the biggest venue that uh, Jay Sable Entertainment, like the biggest crowd, the rowdiest crowd, what is the biggest venue that Jay Sable Entertainment has ever played? The biggest one, probably yeah. the one we did a couple weeks ago where we did uh, the work with Raw National, Raw National Born Artists. They, uh, they put on these big talent shows and uh, I actually had the privilege of hosting that show and performed in front of over 500 people. Wow, 500? Yeah. That's not bad. So um, out of all the shows you do, what do you say is like your best show? What would we come to Jay Sable Entertainment for? Name this tune. How come? 
Because it's just the most fun. <laughs> it's different, it's unique, nobody else is doing it. And whether you know music or you don't, you sit there and you listen and you're like, I know that song. Couldn't tell you who the title and artist is, but man, I used to listen to that one back in the day. That's usually what happens a lot. Yeah. So it, with the name This Tune Game, there's obviously there's people who were former DJs. Do you let them play? Absolutely. Do they usually win? No. <laughs> and do you think that says something about the DJs, or do you think that that's something you do? No, because if I were to play it, I, if, it, if I didn't cut up the music, I wouldn't know half of it either, because as DJs, you hear a song and you can put it with 50 other songs. The longer it just takes you too long to so narrow it down. So you set up the shows every week that you do for Name This Tune? Yeah. Or does anybody else do that for you? Just me. Just you? Wow, that is impressive because I've been to one of the shows. I've been to a few of them. Just a few. And I gotta say, just a few of them. I got to say, I love the setup of the shows. It's such a diverse, like uh, when you do a D uh, Name This Tune show, how diverse is the music? Is it all just newer stuff? Is it all 80s? Is it... Primarily, um, the music ranges, most of the music comes from like the 70s, 80s, and 90s because that takes care of both your, your older generations and your younger right. generations. Um, and then we branch out from that with some of the new music and then some of the older music. We'll go back to the 50s and 60s. We'll play stuff that came out last month. <laughs> but majority of it, it comes from that central area. That way most people have at least heard it before. Right. So how successful would you consider your business right now? Would you consider it better than other companies in the area? Like, would you consider it more successful over the last couple months than a couple of the other DJ companies that I know you've worked with? For I would say, before? ask me that in a year. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta wait and see what happens. Ask me that in a year. I see. All right. Um, when you do uh, other types of shows, especially the karaoke's and the DJing shows, is there a certain type of venue you're looking for, or should any bar owner contact you? Anybody can. It doesn't okay. matter. You, you could do it in your backyard. It doesn't matter where you do it. Speaking of contacting you, how should we contact you? Uh, we're on Facebook. You can find it at JSable Entertainment on Facebook, jsableentertainment.com. Phone number is 440-721-1785. I'm sure, I think it's on the back of your shirt, It is, right? it is on yep, the back of the right shirt. it's right on the back of the yeah. shirt. Yep. Uh, do you have a Twitter account to follow? Do you have a... JSable ENT. Okay. And then uh, I noticed you were work uh, earlier, you told me you're also working on some videos to put up on your website and things like that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when we do go to the website, can we uh, find out uh, specific... I'm a beast, I'm a frog, I don't think I went to dog. Do you need help with sound production or know someone searching for that extra edge in the music business? Well, look no further. Get it, get it pop, 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 Poppin' pop, Studios has found you. Get it, Poppin' Studio, located on Warrensville Center Road in Cleveland, has everything you need to get your music career started. From Pro Tools to production to perfection. We're gonna get it poppin'. Want a tattoo but don't know where to go? Voodoo Monkey Tattoo is a safe, clean environment with a laid-back professional atmosphere. The Voodoo Monkey Tattoo artists have over 50 years experience combined. Voodoo Monkey Tattoo located near downtown in historic Ohio City. Voodoo Monkey Tattoo, see for yourself why Scene Magazine named them the tattoo shop. Check out their award-winning tattoos at voodoomonkey.org or walk in and experience body art at its best. Everybody spills. And if you're buying those expensive cafe drinks, you're just throwing money all over yourself. Introducing the Spill Body, the grown-up sippy cup. Spill Body can hold any drink. Hot, cold, carbonated, flat, frozen, boiling. The Spill Body does it all. And it can be yours just for 15 easy payments of 99 cents. And if you order in the next 10 minutes, we'll throw in the Scare Shield, the easy way to stay clean while eating. And a second Spill Body. That's a $20 value. Yours free when you call 1-800-NO-SPILL. So call now before you spill another drink. Cloverleaf Lanes is your number one spot for fun, food, and bowling. Whether you're looking for something fun to do this weekend with the family or looking to bowl in a league, we've got it all. Between the large menu at our snack bar, the beer selection at our cocktail lounge, our 14 by 9 foot billiard table, and our video game arcade, we've got something for everybody. We're open seven days a week, 9 a.m. to midnight, and open until 2.30 a.m. on weekends. Cloverleaf Lanes, it's right up your alley. Welcome back to Whip It Out. Today I have with me the legend of the singing, the aristocrat of theater, Mr. Anthony James Fotai, also known as Tony Fotai. Welcome, Tony. Thank you. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How about yourself? I'm doing just fine. Thank That's you. That's awesome. Now, I have you here today because you are known 
all around the world for your upcoming performance as Seymour, lead in Little Shop of Horrors. Yes. What can you tell me about what exactly Little Shop of Horrors is? Well, it is about a plant, obviously. And it is about a guy uh, that he's a big nerd and he like... Would you say this was typecast in a way? Yeah, yeah. Go on, please. Um, and they have this plant shop that isn't doing very well. And then Seymour has this little fly trap plant that he like brings out and shows the shows the owner and one of the other coworkers, mm -hmm. and they and he like uh, he just grows he like grows it out and how does it, it grow? He I actually or not me but Seymour actually gives it blood. His own blood? Yes, his own blood to make it grow. Wow. And by the time that the end of the show, it's about probably the size of that that background. The building or just this little background like this? The whole background. Because if, if it's a building, that's amazingly big. I mean, whew, wow. So, <laughs> so what you're saying is that this plant was basically feeding off humans. Yes. Incredible, incredible. Uh, what would you say it was like being the lead for this, for this specific musical? It was very different. I mean, uh, I really haven't like gotten this big of a part before. I mean, I've got I've gotten minor roles, but but never had the the lead lead. What so other roles did you have? I had a minor role in high school. Actually, my junior year, we did f the musical Footloose, mm -hmm. and I was actually the bad guy. I was Chuck Cranston. Oh, you were the guy that was trying to beat up Kevin Bacon. Yes, I was. <laughs> I hated you. I hated well, that character. Not you. You're you're yeah. you're, you're okay. Oh. <laughs> um, any other musicals you've been known for uh, being a part of? Um, I was um, I was just a chorus member in it's the musical of Thoroughly Modern Millie, oh. and then my freshman year we did Carousel. So basically, throughout your musical career, you were also being in high school. Right. Yes. Wow. Yep. Okay. Uh, what were some challenges you faced uh, during production for Little Shop? Well. In, I was in choir in high school, mm. and we and I was a tenor one as m my freshman year, okay. and then by the time senior year came around, I was bass two, which is the lowest part that you can get. So you went from like like the highest part. Ah, to yeah, oh. yeah. Wow. So, so and by the time I got this role, I had to hit like a really high A, which is a tenor one note. And like I was very nervous to get it. I was afraid I was going to crack and everything. Mm -hmm. And then one day in rehearsal, I got it, and I got it ever since. Wow, great. Yeah. Hard work definitely paying off yes, that way. Yes, very. What would you say was one of your favorite scenes acting-wise in Little Shop? Probably the scene, probably the, lo the love scene, actually. The love scene with you and Audrey won? Yes, Audrey won, mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> and it, it, it was a scene before the big love number called Suddenly Seymour. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Would you say that was one of your favorite songs? One of them. One of them. My other one was probably it's called Feed Me. I like feed the plant my blood and like it's it's just a big number and the plant actually starts talking to me in that number. Someone uh behind the scenes doing like yes. a voiceover? Yes. Yep. Would this person while doing the voice for the plant itself also be controlling the plant on stage? Actually no. We had a, a different guy controlling the plant. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So one person specifically to talk, one specifically to do the mechanics yes. of it. Yes, yep. Um, as you being the lead, yes. Seymour, what would you say would have been your second favorite character to have uh, been casted for, if not the lead? Well, if we, if we would have ever done this, mm -hmm. it, the musical's called The, the Producers, mm -hmm. and the character's name is Leo Bloom. He's like a nerdy guy as well. Mm -hmm. And I think he would be the other character that I would have been loved to play. Okay. Any specific yeah. character in Little Shop besides Seymour oh. would you have liked to have been? Probably the owner of the shop. His name was Mr. Mushnick, actually. I have to say that's one of the most funniest names I've ever heard ever in my yes. life. Mr. Mushnick. Mushnick, Mushnick yes. It, yeah. Just saying the name makes me want to like wash my mouth off with, with ugh. Okay. And <laughs> what would you say uh, other actors would you say have been your inspiration for uh, during the musical? Um, probably Matthew Broderick. He played Leo Bloom in The okay. Producers when they did it on Broadway. 
So him and probably probably Neil Patrick Harris is probably an, a, another one. So mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, what was your first reaction when the cast list came up and you saw that you had been you had been casted as the lead? I mean, I was. I was shocked. Um, during the callbacks, um, I read for Seymour a lot. So, I mean, I wasn't like expecting it, but I would kind of knew they were kind of choosing me for, or they're kind of thinking about choosing me for that role. But I, but I wasn't sure, so I was still like pretty, pretty shocked that I got it. Uh, were you ever nervous uh, throughout the whole uh, beginning, uh, casting, uh, auditions to production, learning lines, and uh, eventually to your performances? Um, I mean, yes, yeah. Throughout? Or? Throughout, yeah, but I mean, after I learned all my lines and... Sometimes more specific than others you were nervous? Yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, how long have you been acting? Um, probably since my freshman year of high school when we did the musical Carousel, um, the spring musical. Mm -hmm. But, so yeah, other than... How long have you been singing? I've been singing since I did choir, I think in fifth grade. I've been doing, I've been singing since then. It's just been part of your life for yeah. a very mm -hmm. long time. Yep, and, and both of my sisters were, were singers. Oh, or, so it's, or, it's or, like, it's a me, family thing. Yes, it's, yes, it's mm -hmm. a, it is a family thing. Um, what are some funny moments that happened off stage or during production? Um, actually. Something probably the other actors wouldn't want other people to know about. Um, one rehearsal, here. we were doing a scene, we had like four different plants throughout the whole musical, and I like was controlling the second plant. Oh. It, I, I was like controlling it with my hand. While, uh, while acting? Yes, you were like, yes. While, oh, while, yeah. while acting and singing, yes. Uh -huh. um, so I had to, and it was during one of the musical numbers, and I had like 30 seconds to put the plant on, like, put it like th through like the little sock that we had it through. Mm -hmm. And like the, one of like the stage crew people like couldn't like get my hand through it. Was this a performance? No, it was, it was just a rehearsal. Okay. So, um, so like a dry run. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, and like, so I, the choreographer was sitting front row and was like watching me the whole time. And I was kind of like winging it because I really could not like get my hand through the hole. So I was kind of like going like this instead of like this. So it was really awkward. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, and you were telling me this uh, backstage before we came on, that there was a scene where you and your second favorite character, Mr. Mushnick. Yes. There's a part where you guys are acting together, and this yes. was during a rehearsal where he mm. apparently hits you. Yeah. And the, and the director uh, didn't really enjoy how, how it turned about. Uh, could you tell us a little more about it? Yeah, we were singing for the, the pit, the, the pit orchestra for the first time and we were just singing our number together and there is a part in the number that he has to slap me and he and I told him to actually slap me and we did and the director got really angry he like yelled and yelled like really loudly in front of everyone and it was, he was he wasn't expecting there to be an actual actual slap actual until, impact yeah. until performances right right yeah it was really bad it must have been really embarrassing yeah yeah it was a little bit um, how long did it take for you to memorize the whole script? Because for me also, being in uh, musicals myself, but it's not about me, uh, you would have to have learned both your lines and other people's lines as well to, yes. to memorize it uh, fully. Mm -hmm. How long would you say it, it took you to memorize both your lines and, and the other characters' lines as well? Well, we did a lot of rehearsals, obviously, so it kind of helped uh, going through like blocking, like acting, blocking everything. And, but I mean, really just when I got home from, when I got home from rehearsal, I just kept going, just reading through the script and like kind of memorizing it. Top priority to, yeah. to oh, yeah. that? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Um, what would you say have been one of your most favorite per performances for as long as you've been uh, uh, performing the show? Mm -hmm. Probably Footloose my junior year. Well, it's just because that character, I... You liked being the bad guy? Yeah, yeah. And, and it was like opposite of what I am. So it was like really funny, like people like came up to me after the show and was like, oh my God, I did not expect that was you. And like all this, all this stuff like that. So it was, 
it was it, that's it, it, probably it took you favorite. outside of uh, your comfort zone in right a way. yes yes for sure because I had to like yell at one point and it was just I I you like, had to yell yeah God God forbid you had to do I know. that huh? I know <laughs> um, could you give it, uh, our listeners right now for the show could you give them any upcoming events at specific places um, actually in July July 21st through the 27th um, we have a few performances like going on at EJ Thomas Hall in, in Akron and um, so yeah okay well come, come check, check out Tony out. Fotai uh, at Seymour and Little Shop of Horrors Tony thank you so much for having thank us you. on thank you thank you very we, much when we come back we're gonna have everybody else on the show to finish up this has been Whip It Out Life is a journey. You never know where you're going to go. People try to relate, but they can never put themselves in your shoes. Jordan 9s. Comfortable, stylish, and just for you. You want to be the center of attention no matter where you go. In the club or in the office, Jordan 9s will be a perfect fit. Even if they try to kick you when you're down, Jordan 9s will be there to comfort you. So go find love or heartbreak. Go over the hills and beyond. Just don't take your eyes away or they'll be gone. Jordan 9s. Where will your journey begin? The Coca-Cola Company has been part of your life and millions of others since 1886. We've been at the office, and we've been there for you and your friends during the big game. When you have an ace up your sleeve, Coca-Cola will be there. After a long, hard day's work, Coca-Cola will be there. When your day is done, Coca-Cola will bring you and yours all the sweet dreams that tomorrow holds. The Coca-Cola Company, part of your life and millions of others since 1886. When you're starting an adventure, you want a vehicle you can depend on. Jeep offers the ultimate in capability without compromise. Its sleek interior and rugged design provide the comfortability and durability that you need. So you could start your adventure with another vehicle, but why would you? With Jeep, fun and freedom go hand in hand. Jeep, live rugged since 1941. back to whip it out that was a pretty interesting show yeah yes. like all of our guests were like somehow associated like they were the djs or they're some type of live performance or mm. a lot lots of talent i we mean we should do more yeah. of these theme shows we should we should well well I'll take as that we back. all know most of our the twerking show didn't go too well twerk yeah, that was a disaster twerk you, you can see that on whip it out.com if you want <laughs> obviously i was off that day so that's why it wasn't good yeah, that's why it was bad that's why it's bad. What was, uh, well, tomorrow is Whip It Out Wednesday, so what's our theme going to be tomorrow? I mean, I'm sure viewers can guess, but why don't we just let them in, a little sneak peek at what tomorrow's going to consist of. Go for it. We're going to have some celebrities coming in that are a little well-known for their, let's say, they're, they're famous for things that most people wouldn't be proud of, but they're, they're definitely assets. proud of in their own way. Assets. Right. Literally, assets. We're going to have Farrah Abraham, we're going to have Ron Jeremy, and we're going to have Pamela Anderson. Ooh. This is about to be an Ooh. Emmy winning performance. Right. I fourth, can't wait for it. Fourth guest is a surprise. You're going to have to tune in, find out who the fourth guest is, but it's going to blow your mind. It's a secret. We have to tie Frisco down for it. So. Yeah. Before we come back from break, we were talking about <coughs> Patron. Patron. Now, Frisco, why don't you tell our, uh, our viewers what fast food restaurant they can find Patron? Chipotle. Chipotle. You get a Chipotle now, you can get a margarita with Patron. Unfortunately, you can't get it to go. I was gonna get it to go. I was gonna be like, nice knowing you guys. <laughs> well, I wanna know what happens if you just order it and you just walk out the door. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think they'll let you. They do. They'll probably just tackle you to the floor. <laughs> just stop someone's like, burrito. No. Stop it! No! <laughs> No. Bouncers and door guys at Chipotle now. Seriously, I could just imagine this huge guy just like <laughs> running oh, over. No. There's <laughs> you're not going imagine anywhere. Imagine some of my size just come boring at you full speed. That'd be great. And uh, there's a five dollar cover when you get that. <laughs> five dollar cover. A sign. A there's a live band. They take breaks to cook chicken and steak. <laughs> <laughs> we are not responsible for anyone that gets hurt right out the door. And it's Patron though too, so that makes it even better. I was I wasn't thinking it'd be something top Patron, Just where you think Chipotle can't get any better. They have alcohol. I know. Soon like, there's going to be a VIP section. 
All your, all, all your guac Don't is worry, on the Jay, house. Jay Hardy <laughs> has one up the road here. They know him. As soon as he walks to the door, they give him his order. I'm right. not even kidding. I, I just say, hey, guys, and then they just start making the food. White rice, I, pinto I, beans, chicken. Nope. Right pinto beans bed. are the worst thing on this earth. <laughs> what? Oh, Seriously. Wait. Dude, you're crazy. No. I double, chicken and pin, double chicken and pinto beans. That's oh. the way to go. With guac. Oh. No, and I'm, double rice. I, you gotta get those fajitas, dude. The peppers, green peppers, and onions. You gotta get that hot sauce and a bunch of cheese. Sketchy, Forget sketchy. about it. Well, we're nearing towards the end of our show, and uh, we have a lot of content that we want you to uh, check out after the show. So where can they go to see that stuff? I believe we have to go to the Whip It Out Facebook page or follow us on Twitter at, well, Whip It Whip Out. It out. <laughs> Whip It Out. But look for the one with the pictures of us, because for other accounts that have the name Whip It Out, Probably something you don't want to come up on your internet history, so just make sure <laughs> yeah. you're on the right account. Jake, will you spell Mom, it? I swear. Spell it out for him, will you? Because it's just like our radio show. Ah, we're on a sports show. It, it's W H I P I T O U T. No spaces, no underscores, nothing. You see one of those? Run the opposite way. Do not go to whipthemout.com. Do not. <laughs> do not. You will get a virus. Yeah. Your computer will literally implode. I'm not going to lie to you. The first week we were doing this show, I did that, and I had to throw my computer away. My nice. screen <laughs> melted to the to the floor. Like, All right, it remember, became, it became like a butter. liquid. Whipitout.com. We'll see you tomorrow. Take it easy. Great show. See you guys later. Whip it out. Whip it out. Whip it out. <laughs>